Okay, so now we're going to talk about exponential functions, which is hopefully something you've seen before, probably in uh, Algebra 1, then again in Algebra 2. Okay, so exponential functions are characterized by changes that are expressed in terms of a percentage or a factor. So when you have a percent increase or a percent decrease, or when we say factor, we imply multiplication. So we're looking at something where we're multiplying. So unlike a linear equation where we are adding or subtracting the same thing, we have a constant increase or decrease. When we're talking about exponential, we're talking about a constant factor that we're changing by or constant percentage that we're changing by. Some would say we're looking at a constant ratio between the two uh, events or the C or series of things. So from one end data point to another, that mean, looks like looks like multiplication, that would imply that you're looking at exponential. So something in the form where the independent variable is changing by one. Let's say that we started off at two, then four, then eight, then 16, hopefully it's clear, that we're multiplying by two in each case. And that would imply that we're looking at exponential, in this case, growth. Um, exponential decay is something where it's going down. Okay, so the basic form of this is a times b to the x. Now, the, that is the most basic. Uh, a would be the vertical stretch. So that vertical A that we've used before for vertical stretch, that's the same thing. Now, it is, when I say sometimes a y-intercept, in this classic model it is the y-intercept, but when we talk about something that's been um, shifted up or down, um, and we'll see that later on when we look at how graphs can be modified uh, with our vertical translations, right, um, then that may not be the y-intercept, but it influences the y-intercept. The important one here is B, is the, it's the base, it's what you're multiplying by, okay? So that's very important. And then remember, the shortcut for multiplying by the same thing, so if I wanted to multiply B times B, my shortcut would be B squared. So if I want to multiply, that is shortcut multiplying over and over again by the same thing, that is why we have X as the exponent. So x is the exponent. That's very important. So the independent variable ends up being an ex, ex, the exponent, which is why this is called an exponential model. Okay. So percent change. So when we take a percent change of something, everything is based on 100%. So if I take 100% of something, which by the way is a decimal, is one, right? To go from percent to decimal, you divide by 100, right? That would be the decimal form. It's the same as multiplying by one. So if I had, let's say, two dollars, right, and I invested, it in, so day zero, right, after day one, let's say I had 100% of what I had before, that would mean two dollars, right? It's like sticking to the bank and you're not getting paid any interest, right? However, if I'm talking about a percent increase, then we talk about 100% as our basic. If we go higher than 100%, that would be an increase. So like, let's say we had a 5% increase, then we would start at 100%, add 5%, and that would mean we'd have 105% of our original after one iteration, day, month, year, whatever it happened to be. Basically what that means is if we have a 5% increase, instead of multiplying by one, which would be no increase or decrease, it's 100%, right? We'd multiply by, and this is where it gets tricky. We cannot multiply by 105, that would mean we have 105 times as much money, which doesn't sound right, does it? 5% increase and we have 105 much. No, no, that wouldn't make sense. We'd go from two to $210 in one day. Yeah, no bank's doing that. But we would multiply by 1.05. So remember, you have to convert percent to a decimal. So we multiply by 1.05 to represent our 5% increase, which means, well, 5%, that means we, for every dollar we'd get five cents. So we'd have $2.10 after one iteration, day, month, year, whatever it happens to be, if we were paying 5%. So if it was a percent decrease, the same thing, so if, let's say we had an 8% decrease, then that would look like, well, we'd still start at 100%, right? Still start at 100%, but we'd subtract, meaning after we decreased 88%, we'd have 92% of the value left. So let's say that we had something like $100 invested and we did not invest it wisely. So like on day one, right? Then we invested it unwisely and we suffered through an 8% decrease. That would mean that we would only have, so we'd lose 8% of this, that is we'd lose $8, so we'd have $92 left, okay? 
So that would mean we multiply by 0.92, because remember, we have to convert these into a decimal. So the decimal ends up being less than one. It means it's going to decrease. If it's more than one, it's going to increase. And this is how we deal with percent changes. Okay? So key things, convert to decimals. And everything starts at 100%. Increase, you add it. Decrease, you take it away. All right? And whatever you're multiplying by is what you have after that. So the 92% is what remains, or the 105% is more, right, is what remains. So growth versus decay. If B is larger than 1, it is growth. That is, if you multiply by a number larger than 1, so y equals a times b to the x, it all has to do with the base, right? And if the base is more than 1, it's growth. It, doesn't, it can be fractionally more than 1. If it's less than 1, it's decay. Now, in general, and this is a probably a good, point, good time to point this out, the base is always going to be greater than 0. Um, it's also not going to be equal to 1. There's a couple reasons for that. First off, if it was less than, it would be negative, right? Which would mean we'd be multiplying by a negative number, which wouldn't make a lot of sense, especially because if you think about it carefully, if I multiply by a negative number once, it would make it negative if A was positive. And then if I multiply by a negative number again, it would make it positive. So we get this oscillating behavior, all right? It's not too much to think about, but in general, the base must be more than 0. It can't be equal to 1 because if I multiply by 1, nothing changes. So it turns out that's just a linear model, a horizontal line. But if B is more than 1, growth. Like 1.01, .01, that's still growth. Decay, 0.99999. Not going to decrease much, but it is going to decrease. Okay? Um, negative exponents. So remember, negative exponents take the multiplicative inverse, which I'm going to write as the reciprocal. Which means, if you are looking at something like 2 to the negative x, right, that's the same as 2 to the negative 1 to the x, which is the same as, well, what's the reciprocal of 2? So in general, if you've got something where it's a negative exponent, it's probably easier to write it as a positive exponent. And that would mean that where this may look initially like it's growth, it's actually decay. That is multiplying by 1 half, OK? Now, when you're looking at this graphically, right, if you're looking at growth, it means that you're looking at an increase. So maybe it starts at 1, and after day 1, it doubles, right? After day 2, if it, so it doubles once, that means it's got to double again. So what's going to happen is you're going to get see precipitous growth. You're going to see this growth that just skyrockets. So it's going to go virtually straight up. But then as we work negative, now, is it possible to have negative exponents? Sure. Which means if I'm multiplying by 2 to go this way, right? That would mean I'm dividing by 2 to go this way. And actually, that works for either direction, yes? I'm always multiplying by 2. In fact, I'm doubling no matter what this way. But if I go backwards in this graph, I'm going to divide by 2, which means this gets cut in half. So what does that mean? That means that you're going to end up dividing by 2 over and over. You're never actually going to hit 0 because you can't divide something that has a value and divide it by enough where it's actually going to ever equal 0. So it's going to have an asymptote along the x-axis or along the line y equals 0, OK? Uh, exponential decay uh, looks very similar, except instead of multiplying by a number such that it's increasing, you're multiplying by a number such as decreasing. So it starts off uh, with your, remember the general pattern here would be your dividing here going this way, and your multiplying going this way is another way to think of that. So what happens is you end up with something that looks suspiciously like a reflection over the line y equals x. So like, let's say that this was y equals 2 to the x, which would definitely be growth. We're doubling each time. This could be y equals 2 to the negative x, which, by the way, we've shown is the same as 1 half x. Okay. So this is the situation where we're talking decay. b is between 1 and 0. And here we're talking b is more than 1. Graphs, asymptotes, and end behavior. Well, like we just talked about, uh, in general, growth it's going to look like this, growth. And unmodified, it's going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And the end behavior is going to be, as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, 
y goes to tends towards zero, right? We have to split this up because it's actually two different things. Um, decay is similar, but kind of reversed. Still has a horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. And n behavior would be as x goes to positive infinity, the table is turned, now y is going to zero, and vice versa. As x goes to negative infinity this direction, right, then y is going to positive infinity. They are, after all, just reflections of the line y, or the uh, y-axis also. Okay. And this concludes the brief introduction to exponentials.